2018 Toyota Corolla 2018 Toyota Corolla Review The 2018 Toyota Corolla is really a competent or even overly exciting option for a daily driver. 3 star overall score With a small price tag and reputation solid reliability, it is easy to see why the Toyota Corolla has become one with the world's best selling vehicles of final 50 plus years. The 2018 Toyota Corolla builds upon the achievements of its ancestors with expressive styling, a surprisingly roomy cabin, a good amount of advanced security features and comfortable, supportive seats. But as the Corolla covers the basic principles well enough, several deficiencies make its rivals better picks overall. The Corolla's cabin is very plain and does little to cause you to think you've bought just to a basic small car. It isn't great to drive either, due to the underpowered engine. Factor in a tiny trunk and poor smartphone integration and you've got a car which is difficult to recommend in a very class stacked with an increase of desirable choices. What's new? The 50th anniversary edition trim may be dropped. Otherwise, the Toyota Corolla carries forward unchanged. If you don't want to spend money, the Louis Co would be the way to go. We like it since you get a lot of features, a rather more powerful engine, and modest fuel economy gains in the Elendler. Our top pick, however, could be the Corolla A. It adds a modicum of fun for the Corolla's otherwise snooze-inducing driving experience. It's also the one model provided by a manual transmission. Select the manual on the Drone CVT. And you should also get extra goodies for example a sunroof and upgraded infotainment system. Trim levels and features. The 2018 Toyota Corolla sedan is sold in six trim levels. L, La, Luico, Se, XSE and XLE. Every Corolla is powered with a 1.8 litre four-cylinder engine. Most models produce 132 horsepower and 128 pound-feet of torque. The Luico is often a bit more efficient with 140 horsepower and 126 pounds to feet power is routed to your front wheels via a continuously variable automatic transmission, CVT, on all models, although same might be optioned which has a six-speed manual. Standard equipment about the base cell model includes 15-inch steel wheels, LED headlights, LED daytime running lights adaptive cruise control, a tilt and telescoping tire, a motorist information display, a height adjustable driver's seat, a 60-40 split folding rear seat, Bluetooth, a 6.1 inch touch screen along with a 6 speaker sound system with 6.1 inch touch screen, a CD player, a USB port and, for iPhone users, the Siri Eyes free voice control system. Standard safety systems will include a rear view camera, forward collision warning with automatic emergency braking and pedestrian detection, lane departure warning with steering assist, to nudge you back to your lane, and automatic high beams. The low adds 16-inch steel wheels, heated mirrors, variable intermittent wipers, remote locking and unlocking, metallic cabin accents, upgraded upholstery, a rear armrest and automatic climate control. The Eco depends on the LAS features and adds engine and suspension tuning suitable for maximum fuel efficiency, 15-inch steel wheels, a rear spoiler and enhanced aerodynamics. The XLE builds upon the LAS pair of features, adding 16-inch alloy wheels, upgraded headlights, LED taillights, bumper-mounted LED daytime running lights, a sunroof, keyless entry and ignition, simulated leather upholstery, Toyota Softex, a power-adjustable driver's seat with two-way power lumbar, heated front seats, a leather wrapped tire, a substitute driver information display, a 7-inch touch screen display, an app-based navigation system, Scout GPS link, and satellite and HD radio. The say will be the sporty Corolla, although we use the term loosely. It starts off with the loose features and adds 17-inch alloy wheels, unique front-end styling that has a black mesh grille, a rear spoiler, tire with paddle shifters, for CVT models, sport front seats, soft X upholstery with cloth inserts, along with a sports tile gauge cluster. Also included will be the XLE's upgraded headlights, bumper mounted LED daytime running lights and leather wrap tire. 
opt for that manual transmission and you should also obtain a sunroof, keyless ignition and entry, plus the upgraded infotainment system. The XSE has got the same annual transmissions extras and adds heated front seats, the 8-way power adjustable driver's seat, the paddle shifters and full softex upholstery. A few options packages can also be found. Le and the Eco models can come up the premium package, which adds 16-inch alloy wheels, bumper integrated LED running lights as well as the upgraded infotainment system. A sunroof may be added to the present package for Eula. It's added with the package for that week. Oh. The premium package for say CVT models includes keyless entry and ignition, a sunroof along with the upgraded infotainment system, while XLE and XSE models can select an integrated navigation system and smartphone integration through Intune App Suite. Trim tested. Each vehicle typically can be purchased in multiple versions which can be fundamentally similar. The S on this review use our full test from the 2017 Toyota Corolla C, 1.8 liter inline 4, CVT, FWD. Note, since this test was conducted, the latest Toyota Corolla has gotten some revisions. For example the deletion on the say 50th anniversary special edition, that won't affect this, because trim was nothing more than an appearance package with the XSE. Our findings remain broadly applicable to this particular year's Toyota Corolla. Driving Performance never been a robust suit for that Corolla, plus it still isn't, especially with the present crop of compact cars. The engine under its hood hasn't changed since 2009, and also the CVT automatic seems conflicted about its identity. If you value an engaging drive, there are several better options. Acceleration The aging four-cylinder engine delivers underwhelming acceleration and winds unpleasantly when motivated to work. This characteristic is exacerbated from the CVT automatic, which attempts to simulate transmission gear changes without results. We needed 10.1 seconds to attain 60 miles per hour, which can be quite slow with the class. Braking Around town, the brakes have a great feel are smooth as well as simple to modulate, and have the pedal squish that plagues some in the other Toyota models. In our emergency braking tests, the Corolla needed 125 feet to quit, that's slightly over average due to this segment. Steering At low speeds, steering effort is light, there is however no feel to be connected to your road. It's better in sport mode at higher speeds, there's less assist. Better on center feel and in some cases some semblance of feedback rounding a large part. Most buyers within this segment will discover this adequate. Handling Without any real sporting intentions, the Corolla exhibits surprisingly tidy handling. There isn't much grip supplied with the all-season tires, but we had been surprised by how composed the Corolla remains at the mildly spirited pace, which can be more than enough so it will be feel lively out and about. Drivability The powertrain delivers decent throttle response despite its absence of power and unrefined character. The CVT is usually a little more fickle in the way it adjusts ratios for the fly but in addition simulates gear shifts using instances. Putting aside every one of the oral idiosyncrasies, the Corolla is really a decent driver. Comfort The sport seats that are included with the SAE provide great support even when they seem somewhat misplaced. There's nothing outstanding in regards to the ride inside the Corolla, but we did chose the climate control to become more than sufficient keep cabin temps in order. Seat Comfort The Satrim includes sport seats with generous lateral support, and despite its sparse adjustments, the seats proved comfortable more than a three-hour trip. Cloth center sections provide breathability preventing the seats from getting swampy more than a longer drive stint. Ride Comfort Ride Comfort isn't a better than average for just a compact car. It isn't overly floppy and bouncy nonetheless it transmits bumps such as small car it can be. High frequency vibrations are specifically prominent also it doesn't appear like much effort was placed into making it ride as being a larger car. Noise and Vibration 
there's a normal amount of road noise, but nothing more than some and fewer than others with this class. There's also some wind noise throughout the mirrors, however it's not enough for being a nuisance. The biggest noise offender would be the racket created through the engine at full throttle. Climate control. The climate controls are straightforward using a set of three rocker switches from the center for temperature, fan speed and vent control. The auto climate setting works effectively to keep up comfortable cabin temperature. Interior. Slipping in and out on the Corolla's cabin is not hard, and when you're in, there's ample room to fully stretch. All cabin controls are straightforward, as well as the touch screen is responsive, or else a bit oversensitive. Unfortunately, some will discover an issue with the insufficient steering column extension. He's useful. The Toyota Corolla's cabin layout is obvious and familiar as well as doesn't try to become fancy, therefore it is pretty user-friendly and determined. The touch screen is responsive, but it's not hard to inadvertently brush a finger against a control you do not mean to, which may be thrust, getting in, getting out. Ingress and egress are easy thanks to the lowest step over height and wide door openings. Even the rear doors have a very good head clearance which supports minimize the level of ducking had to slip into the spine seats. Driving position. There are few seat adjustments beyond basic fundamentals. The leader tilts and telescopes, even so the puny amount it extends is laughable. Taller drivers will almost certainly have to compromise legroom to support their reach. At least the tire is leather wrapped and has now a nice ergonomic feel. Roominess. There's many room at the start, although sports seats may experience a little narrow for larger drivers. There's decent headroom with the spine and 41.4 inches of legroom, which obliterates everything inside compact segment and embarrasses many mid-sized cars. A nearly flat floor pan also aids foot space. Visibility. Large front windows feel large and pillars that happen to be thin as part of your line of sight lead to good forward visibility. Rear visibility is additionally decent because of fairly sizable rear windows and headrests which aren't obstructive. A rear view camera is standard. Quality The Corolla lacks in quality feel particularly when compared to Honda, Mazda and Subaru. Hard plastic abounds in most areas, which unfortunately cheapens an otherwise attractive decor. The seats, infotainment, climate controls and controls look of quality, the rest does not. Utility Compact sedans aren't desired for their outstanding utility, however, some do a better job of maximizing the place they have. The Corolla isn't one particular cars. While we much like the wide trunk opening and split and folding seats, the amount change from the spine kept us from loading some longer items. Small item storage. Storage selections for small items is average. There's a tiny tray ahead on the shifter along with a relatively small dual level armrest bin. The door pockets will hold an ordinary water bottle, and not much else. The glove box is the normal size, and there is no flip down storage for sunglasses. Cargo space. The Corolla's trunk incorporates a fairly wide opening plus a broad floor head with the rear wheel wells but, at 13 cubic feet of volume, space is about the lower side of average. The rear seats are split 60-40 and they also fold, but there is a pretty significant two-level intensify from a corner floor. Child safety seat accommodation Two pairs of latch anchors are hidden somewhat deep to the rear seat cushions, which doesn't create easy access but the upper tethers are found under flip covers and so are easier to access. The Corolla's generous rear legroom is effective when it comes to rear-facing seats. Technology The Corolla is definitely average across the board in relation to technology. The driver aids don't quite function to your standard of other competitors for instance Honda and Subaru, and Toyota's smartphone integration, through its proprietary app is often a poor replace Apple can't play an Android Auto. Audio and Navigation 
the speakers is fine, but audio quality begins to get a bit fuzzy after you crank up the degree. Navigation comes thanks to your smartphone after downloading Toyota's in TuneUp. The screen resolution is sharp, though the glassy piano black surfaces surrounding it undoubtedly are a magnet for fingerprints. Smartphone integration There's a USB connector, and a Bluetooth pairs quickly and is useful. Toyota provides smartphone integration through its very own app called Intune, which isn't nearly as robust as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Driver aids Lane departure Lane keeping assist doesn't operate below 32 miles per hour, even though it does a significant job if it's operational. The adaptive cruise control had some trouble maintaining uphill speed and, like Mazda's system, won't bring the automobile to a stop. Bummer. But this stuff is standard. That's rare. Voice control. The voice controls respond well to commands, though when they don't there can be an option to train it to recognize your voice. Functions are limited by audio and call calls if you do not use Toyota's Intune app. Siri voice will work which has a paired iPhone in case you hold the button longer.